Welcome to Climate State, a weekly to bi-weekly broadcast on what's going on with the Earth's climate systems. This is your host, Gerard Spring, coming to you from the North. So in this one, I want to take a little bit of a diversion from the typical climate state problems of abrupt climate change and focus on the toxic aftermath of war and the antics of the military-industrial complex. The military-industrial complex is one of the most polluting organizations on the planet, if not the most polluting organization on the planet. In particular, I want to take a look at some articles that came out in some European newspapers addressing the aftermath of the NATO bombing campaign of Serbia and Montenegro in 1999. This was one of the first bombing campaigns in which depleted uranium shells were used, and right now we're starting to see the effects of the depleted uranium shells both on the population that's living in Serbia and Montenegro, particularly Serbia, as well as the ecological disaster from chemical waste resulting from the bombing campaign. So starting out with depleted uranium, I want to point out an old article published in Global Research, which is titled Explaining How Depleted Uranium is Killing Civilians, Soldiers, and Land. And I'm going to quote a little bit from the article here. The U.S. government has known for at least 20 years that DU weapons produce clouds of poison gas on impact. These clouds of aerosolized DU are laden with billions of toxic submicron-sized particles. A 1984 Department of Energy conference on nuclear airborne waste reported that tests of DU anti-tank missiles showed that at least 31% of the mass of DU penetrator rounds are converted to nanoparticles on impact. In larger bombs, the percentage of aerosolized DU increases to nearly 100%. DU is harmful in three ways. It is chemically toxic, has radiological toxicity, and particle toxicity. Nanoparticles, which are less than a billionth of a meter, are a new breed of cat, it says in the article. Because the size of the nanoparticles allows them to pass freely throughout the organism of the body and into the nucleus of the cells. Exposure to nanoparticles causes different symptoms than exposure to larger particles of the same substance, and internalized depleted uranium particles act as a nonspecific catalyst in both nuclear and non-nuclear ways. This means that the uranium particle can affect human DNA and RNA because of both its chemical and radiological properties. Additionally, this is why the DU particles cause many, many, many diseases, the article says. So one of the things about depleted uranium, which is important to understand, is that depleted uranium is pyrophoric, and on impact, the round will vaporize, and the uranium will oxidize and create compounds which can be easily absorbed into the body. Depleted uranium is chemically a heavy metal, and because of this, it acts in the body like many other heavy metals would, and we would start to see some of the effects of heavy metal toxicity, especially with uranium, which can be easily absorbed absorbed in the form of nanoparticulates. For example, you would see some of the same toxicological effects as you would with lead, as well as cadmium and uh, mercury and others. So in addition to this, we also have the radioactive aspect of depleted uranium. Depleted uranium is weakly radioactive, and it decays with a very long half-life of 4.5 billion years via alpha decay. And if you're holding a piece of depleted uranium, this isn't really going to affect you very much because a lot of the alpha particles will be stopped in the skin and won't reach deeper levels of the organism. However, when they're ingested in the form of nanoparticulates, they have the ability to cross the blood-brain barrier and get into the actual mechanics of the cell, causing acute toxicity as well as radiological damage to DNA. So what we're talking about here is a material which is both genotoxic and mutagenic. So it causes DNA damage and it actually initiates the process of oncogenesis. In other words, it causes cancer. And this topic was covered actually in a Serbian newspaper in an article called Investigating the Consequences of NATO's Depleted Uranium Bombs. And I've translated this article for you guys. It says, The facts are there. We are witnessing the daily appearance of an increasing number of solid tumors that occur 15 to 20 years after the bombing campaign. In addition to this, a number of more aggressive tumors are appearing, which is why death from malignant disease is found at the top of Europe and certain areas. Other sources, such as the population age in smoking, cannot explain these rapid increases in cancers. So once the depleted uranium is in the environment, it's virtually impossible to remove it or get it out, especially when it's in nanoparticulate form. Remember that the half-life of depleted uranium is 4.5 billion years, which is approximately of order the age of the planet. So this substance from this conflict is going to be in the environment for the foreseeable future of terrestrial life on Earth. And this is precisely the kind of ecocide that the military-industrial complex pays no attention to when they decide that they want to go ahead and continue with their bombing campaigns. So moving on from the problem of depleted uranium, I also want to address some of the chemical toxicity that occurred from these bombing campaigns. During these bombing campaigns, there were a lot of industrial facilities and chemical plants that were targeted by NATO forces. 
And when they were targeted, a lot of chemical waste was released into the environment, including polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, as well as dioxins. And both of these materials are well known. In fact, they're classic chemical carcinogens. And these were released in large quantities into the environment. And again, they're also very, very hard to get rid of because they're very stable molecules. So in addition to the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons and dioxins, we also have evidence that 165 tons of hydrofluoric acid was dumped into the Sava River. And the Sava River is a tributary which runs from Slovenia down to Belgrade, where it runs into the Danube River. And the Danube River then continues on to reach the Black Sea. So we're talking about a very large watershed which was influenced by this hydrofluoric acid dump. And hydrofluoric acid is a contact poison. It's a very toxic substance which is used as a fluorine precursor in the chemical industry. And it's also used a lot in the semiconductor industry for making processors and etching thin film oxides. This is quite nasty chemical waste, and it has a profound effect on a lot of living things and essentially poisons the water supply for years to come. So the unilateral actions of NATO in conjunction with the military industrial complex have essentially made this region uninhabitable due to chemical and radiological waste. And one of the interesting things that this article points out is the concept of a cover-up related to the ecological damage caused by the actions of NATO. And in April 1999, there was actually a report written by a Senegalese journalist, which was given to the United Nations and later removed from the public eye, where it clearly outlined the effects of the environmental disaster perpetrated by NATO and the military industrial complex. And in that report, it basically said that many of the areas within the Sava River Basin were declared unfit for life. However, the authorities in Serbia since 2000 have essentially violated the residents of these areas because there was never a committee formed of independent experts equipped with laboratories to precisely say what was polluted, where, and how, the article continues to say. The article also saliently points out that silence about all of this corresponds only for NATO mercenaries as well as for NATO. Because if you go out and you discuss what's going on with the issue of radiological and chemical toxicity in Serbia, then the issue of radiological and chemical toxicity will also come up with the conflicts in Iraq, Syria, and Libya, etc. And the bottom line is that while the military industrial complex and defense contractors want to profit off the weapons sales and financial transactions allotted from the spoils of war, they don't want to pay for the environmental damage. And the best way to not pay for it is to pretend that it doesn't exist. The criminality of our society is endless. And if we do not step up together and acknowledge it as a community, we will go down with the very system that we have created. If you enjoyed this presentation, please hit that like button and subscribe, and I'm looking forward to having you along for the next one. Thank you so much for listening.